A lot of people watching this video have planted a plant and then seen something happening to it, like little bugs on it or some sort of disease or some sort of spotted stuff. And then you look up how to eradicate it and they say to spray. You don't even know what that means. You got this thing, what are you supposed to fill it with? How are you supposed to do this? I'm gonna walk you through it. Let's get busy. Well, it seems like there's no shortage of things that can go wrong with your plants. I'm just looking at my citrus here that have had these leaves that are curled because of a thing called leaf miner. And it's really difficult when you come out and see these plants that you care a lot about because you've invested time and energy and effort into it. And you see that something's going wrong with it. We also have had things like over here on our nectarine. We've had things like peach leaf curl this last year which really were difficult and, and stressed the tree because those leaves aren't able to produce for the tree like they're supposed to. Also on this uh, nectarine here, we had some issues with just fungus growing on the outside of the fruit and then they would just drop these little ugly brown and gray moldy things. Ah, so I look up, okay, well that's a fungus. So I have to use a fungicide or on the leaf miner over there on my citrus, I'm supposed to use something that kills those type of bugs, those little leaf miners. There are some options that are there. I wanna walk through just a few of the things that are available to you so that you can use them in your arsenal and feel confident when you're combating the things that are going wrong in your orchard or garden. Oh, and at the end of this video, I'm gonna talk through two things you should absolutely never do when you're spraying your plants and trees. So stay tuned for that, I'll get to it. There are a few options that you have, and I'm gonna talk through four main types of sprays that you can use in your orchard or garden. One of them is just a general purpose spray. And a general purpose spray is kind of like a catch-all, and it has got something in there for everybody. So as you go on there and as you spray that on your plants, you, you're gonna catch whatever you've got. The downside to using something like that that's a very broad application, that's a fungicide, that's an insecticide, you might be affecting those plants around it in a way that's negative, um, or have some of those beneficial insects negatively affected by using something that's so broad. So I like to recommend using something that's more targeted to the actual problem that you have. So if you're absolutely a beginner gardener and you're wanting to take care of something that you see in your orchard or garden, you can use a general spray. It's probably gonna be okay, but I like something that's, that can be a little more targeted. So there are three specific kinds that I'd like to talk through, and those are your dormant sprays, your fungicide sprays, and your insecticide sprays. So I'm gonna show you three options for that. The first one is what they call a dormant spray, it's sometimes used as an overwintering spray. Something that happens is, especially with little bugs, is little bugs will go and lay their eggs on your trees or in the soil and they overwinter. We wanna come through with a spray like this oil spray, this horticultural spray. Um, this is primarily composed of mineral oil, but there are organic options like neem oil and some other things. And what those do is they go, and when you spray those onto the tree, those little eggs that require air, they kind of breathe through the membrane. This oil coats them and essentially smothers those little insects. And that uh, is applicable to a number of things like uh, European red spider mites and scale insects and apple aphids and bud moth and things like that. So if you're experiencing something that could benefit from an overwintering or dormant spray, this is something that you would use. I'm gonna now talk about our fungicide sprays. If you're experiencing issues with fungus, things like leaf, peach leaf curl, like we experienced really heavily this last year, um, or any other evidence of fungus, something you wanna use is a fungicide. Now, I like to use something that's organic like this copper fungicide. It's copper suspended in the solution, and it's something that can be sprayed on all of these plants that will kill the fungus. A fungicide like this, just like the dormant spray, is usually something that's done when fruit trees are dormant. Um, this is done when all of those little fungus are waiting for the little buds on the trees to pop open so they can leap on there and mess up your day. <laughs> so fungicide is something that I'm gonna be spraying through on my peaches and my nectarines to get rid of that peach leaf curl along with any of the other weird stuff that's going on. Uh, fun fun fungally, fungally, fungusly? The stuff where fungus grows, this is gonna kill. So I'm gonna spray that like crazy on these trees. All right, let's talk about insecticides. 
Insecticide sprays can cover any number of types of insects that you have going on in your orchard or garden. Like I showed you a minute ago, we've got this leaf miner insect, and this leaf miner is killed by a thing called spinosad. Um, that's a great type of insecticide that is organic, but is safe for many, many of the beneficial insects. So using something like that is really beneficial. You're gonna wanna look and see when the specific insect that you're targeting is most affected by what you're gonna spray. I'm just holding up this fungicide. It's a stand-in for the spinosad, which I remembered is on top of my fridge and it just feels too far away to go get, just so I can hold this up, so. Spinosad. Okay, now you have bought the right spray and you need to figure out how to apply it. Well, probably the easiest method is if you have something like this, it comes as a pre-mixed thing. It comes with a little built-in sprayer. You go around and you go, ah, I'm gonna get you bugs. <laughs> For small applications, if you've got just a few plants, something like this could work out really well. Pre-mix, you just pump it up and you spray it. Another one is if you buy the concentrate like I was showing a minute ago, a concentrate you mix with some sort of amount of water and you can use something like a spray bottle. If you've got just a couple of plants, maybe like on a blueberry plant or something, this is probably a little small for a tree or for a whole thing of passion fruit, but if you've got a small plant, something like this or even something like this could work. If you're dealing with anything bigger than a small plant, you probably wanna go next size up. This little hand sprayer is pretty cool. It's a pump sprayer that is not huge capacity, um, but it allows you to pump it a few times to pressurize it, and then you just hold the trigger down, and you're able to just spray and spray, and once the spray starts going down, you just pump it up some more. And so for somebody who's got maybe two or three trees, or if you've got a lot of trees, but only a couple of them need to be sprayed, this type of little pump sprayer, hand sprayer, could be really helpful as well. This thing holds like half a gallon. So this gives you some options as well without all that hand action. Finally, here we got the big kahuna. Ugh. The little backpack sprayer. You know, this isn't made by Jan Sport, but uh, might be something to consider. This is really helpful if you're needing to do a ton of spraying. Let's say you're having to clear out like an acre of weeds. This sort of thing, it's kind of hard to put on right now, but You've got like a little pump, you pressurize it, you use this wand to just kind of go through and cover a lot of ground. If you have a lot of trees, if you have an entire orchard or grove, this is definitely the thing that you're gonna wanna buy. Oh, one thing I almost forgot, in addition to these methods that we looked at is a hose end sprayer. And that's the kind that attaches to your water hose coming out of your house. And in this contraption, there's this little container that has the concentrate. And as that water goes by it, it mixes with that concentrate and broadcasts it really effectively, efficiently to a wide area. So if that pump sprayer, that backpack sprayer, is too inconvenient for you. A hose end sprayer, it's not as precise, but it is definitely far easier to use. You've got some options. Let's talk through how to actually do the spraying. I'm gonna give you a couple of tips as we do this as well. Okay, so loaded this guy up with spinosad from the concentrate. This is to combat that leaf miner that we've got here. And so when you're applying something to a foliage, where you've got some sort of insects that are on there that are either live or you're trying to get the larva or trying to get the eggs. Um, you wanna apply this stuff liberally. First thing you always do when you're spraying is put on eye protection. Even if it's organic, doesn't mean that you want it in your eyes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and just spray the tops of these, getting really good coverage, just seeing that the leaves are wet. And this is true whether this is spinosad or like oil that's in, in the water. Um, but something you also want to do is spray underneath the leaves. And the reason for that is oftentimes these bugs, and if you look at all of these, these citrus leaves, all of the le leaf miner damage is actually on the bottom of the leaf, not the top. Bugs are smart. They know the things that see them from the top are gonna eat them, so they hide underneath. Leaf miner really only affects new citrus growth, the, new, the leaves, tender growth. So having to spray all that mature stuff isn't really even necessary in this case. Now we're gonna walk through how to spray the fungicide and the overwintering spray onto one of our nectarines. Let's go take a look. Okay, well here we are with my Arctic Star nectarine. This and its neighbors here suffered really greatly from peach leaf curl last year. And so what I've got in here is my uh, copper fungicide. So have you ever seen an old copper penny that's been oxidized? Well, that's the copper that's just reacted with the air and turned into this really interesting color. So this is something where we want to target those areas of the tree that where the buds are on fruiting wood and before the buds have 
turn into blossoms. Like we see some here, but we're gonna do the best we can. We're catching this just before those buds break. And so all of that fungus that's waiting there just to leap on those buds isn't gonna have a chance because we're gonna take care of it. So we're gonna wanna apply this very liberally and uniformly. Now something when it comes to a fungicide that you wanna be aware of is even though you wanna kill the fungus that's on the tree, you wanna be cautious that everything that is on the ground, all of the fungus that's in the soil, that beneficial fungus, those mycocorrhizae and all of those things that create a, a very thriving environment under the soil, you don't wanna damage those. So my kind of rule of thumb with this would be spray as much as you need to on the tree without having anything drop off into the ground because that can harm the, the beneficial fungus that's in the ground fixing that soil. Good fungus, bad fungus. Now let's say you're coming into your garden or orchard and you realize you need to spray for a couple things. Like we've got a fungicide and an, to spray for overwintering insects. And you're thinking, okay, well, do I have to come through and spray twice for this? A lot of times these can be combined into a single container. So I'll put the appropriate amount of fungicide in there and I'll put the appropriate amount of oil in there, shake the bottle up, and that can then be applied to the fruit trees and it's gonna apply all of the same material onto these trees. Now, there's kind of a pro tip here when it comes to the oil. As you know, oil and water don't mix. So when you've got this little bit of oil in a bunch of water and you're wondering, how am I supposed to get this to not just be all water, 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 water until the oil gets hit? If you take a couple drops of dish soap what it does is it breaks up the bonds of that oil and so it's able to actually go down into the, into the rest of the water. So just a couple of drops of this dish soap in here. And when I shake this up, I'm gonna see that it totally just spreads out through, through all, of the, all of the water. Breaks up those bonds and is ready to spray on these trees. Okay, I told you that there are two times where you do not want to be spraying your trees at all. One time is when they are fully in bloom. Now, you notice that this Arctic star nectarine has a couple of blooms and that's gonna be okay, but the bulk of the tree hasn't bloomed. The reason for that is that these are fruit trees. And if something happens to these blooms where they're not able to be pollinated or something happens to that process, they will not set fruit. And so if you've missed that window for your trees, you just let it go for the next time if, all, if this entire thing is blooming. Okay, a couple of blooms, probably okay. A ton of blooms, don't do it. Okay, the other time you do not want to be spraying your fruit tree is when it's windy. There are a couple of reasons for that. The first is when it's windy, there's the obvious, spray it into the wind, have it get blown in your face. Sometimes these have chemicals in it and you don't want this stuff going in your face or in your eyes or on your clothes or whatever. So when it's windy, don't do it for that reason. The other reason why you shouldn't do this when it's windy is because sometimes that wind will carry something over to another plant. So you're intending to spray over here and the wind is taking it somewhere over here. So that way you're gonna avoid any of that cross wind stuff that might damage another plant. So don't spray when it's windy. An ideal situation is creating an environment in your garden or orchard where all the beneficials are there and you don't need to ever spray because you've got bugs and other things taking care of it. But sometimes it takes a little bit of intervention. And so I hope this video has helped you out with that. If you're not yet subscribed, we'd love to have you. And whether you've got one tree to spray in your orchard or garden or 500, until next time, stay busy. Psst.